did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, government then wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage well, if you didn't pay your taxes. Some, some people would argue that the role of government is, and the reason why we pay taxes, is the government is there to enforce the overall consensus of the population and their ideals and their moral principles and to maintain that order. Um, because, as you said, it's, you know, I have a moral, uh, uh, not contradiction, but, uh, I don't know, more, I'm morally against enforcing my beliefs on other people, right. but at the same time, I uh, accept that other people may believe other things than me, and more people may believe other things that I don't believe than uh, the population that agrees with me on a certain topic. Right. right, and you say like government's here to enforce overwhelmingly the majority, mm -hmm. right? Now, would you say that uh, it's okay to violate the consent of one person if he's outnumbered by three people? I mean, again, it depends on the situation. Right, These so I mean, you would say that there's no justification for a majority to violate the consent of the minority. Uh, I mean, they the, I mean, these are very complex questions. Right. Like again, it depends on the situation. The, well, well, any situation the, to violate consent, right? Uh, well, no, it depends on the situation. What because situation? If someone believes that it's okay to rape someone, well, and there's there's one person and three right. people believe it's not okay to rape someone, well, the I, is I not, would agree. Uh, but if there's three people that believe it's okay to rape someone, right. and one person who doesn't believe it's okay to rape someone, I would not say that it's against or it's morally wrong. Uh, for that one person to institute a rule saying it's not okay to rape. Okay, people. all right. So we can have. All right. So in terms of rules, then mm -hmm. rules must be universal. Yeah. Right. You can't make exceptions, otherwise they're preferences. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, so a rule that says uh, it's wrong to rape someone, that's a good rule. Right. A rule that says it's wrong to steal, that's also a good rule. Mm -hmm. It must be agree. universalized. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't matter then what title you have or color costume you wear to take someone's property without their consent mm -hmm. is theft and wrong, yeah, right? Exactly. So therefore, from there, we can then conclude that in terms of what is taxation, the taking a property from other people. I would not say so. I would say taxation is a form of payment for it's the, not a payment for the you, services that the government does. It's not a payment if you have no choice in the matter, right? If what happens if you, you do can, not surrender you, your property? You can leave the country. No, no. What happens if you don't surrender your property? What do you mean? What happens when you don't pay taxes? Oh, well, they'll audit you, and then you'll either be forced to pay it or... Maybe refuse I mean, to surrender I, your property? I don't think they can jail you. For, they have. They, yeah. I mean... They will throw you into a cage. For... It happened to, to, happen to Wesley to, Snipes for like four years. Who? Wesley Snipes. Never heard of him. Uh, he's, he did Blade. No? The movie? Yeah, the movie. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. So, it happens I mean, like, to a lot of people. What yeah. degree of evading taxes are you talking about? Not evading. I'm not talking about evasion. I'm talking, if you do not surrender your property to government when they demand it, in the form of taxation, mm -hmm. uh, first, yeah, they will put a fine on you. And if you don't, of course, pay that fine, surrender your property mm -hmm. for this fine or citation, they will then come, kick down your door, and throw into a cage for refusal. Don't you say, wouldn't you agree that we all benefit from the services the government can provide for us, such as uh, the, you know, socialized health care, the police force that maintains order, uh, the uh, mil standing military force that guarantees our, our safety from uh, offense, uh, offensing, or not offensing, uh, off offender words. <laughs> uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, like, I do understand, but like if you say then, from that logic reasoning, mm -hmm. uh, it's okay for things to happen as long as the other person benefits. Right? It's very subjective. People value these things differently. If I were to mm -hmm. uh, mow your lawn without your permission, you're at work and you come home and say, hey, I mowed your lawn, here's the bill. You benefited, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It'd be like, no, I didn't ask you to mow my lawn. Well, I didn't ask for that service. I would say mowing a lawn and securing a society's preservation are two different It's the same reason. Okay, so, so let's take what you're just talking, securing. Mm -hmm. You believe that government provides security? That they're yes. here to protect your life, liberty, property? Well, I mean, in a optimal scenario. A, a citizen will be defined as a person who gives political allegiance to the body politic and mm -hmm. in return they're provided security, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, if there's no security provided, then there's no obligation, there's no political allegiance, thus there is no citizen, right? Wait, I'm sorry, say that again? If a citizen, by definition, is that you give political allegiance mm -hmm. to a body po politic, yeah. you surrender some freedoms and return your provided security. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. Now, 
I'm going to tell you then, many Supreme Court judges and rulings have decreed in DeShaney versus Winnebago County and Warren versus District of Columbia and many, many others that they have said there is no obligation for government to protect your life, liberty, property. They're not in the business of protecting life, liberty, property. I would have to look at those cases. Oh, absolutely. Please it's do. in the Constitution, though. I would the judges have uh, said no otherwise. So now, it, okay. So now, I'm a could, criminal justice major here. Okay, could, uh, could, could we talk about those cases? Because I'm actually interested. Right, right. So there's a lot of areas in which uh, people, like the police, were supposed to come and protect, mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't. Protect and, from what? Uh, for example, if somebody had a, um, uh, a restraining order on someone from approaching them, right? Okay. Uh, and so they call the police, hey, this guy's coming around, uh, mm -hmm. the cops never showed up. Right? Okay. And so they, they went to court with this. And it's like, look, you're, you're we're, they, we're paying taxes for this, you're supposed to buy security, you're supposed to respond, and they never did. And the judge says, yeah, you know, we're, we have no obligation to do so. I mean, was it a limitation of resources from no, Netflix? No, I mean, it's, it's if, if, if you're paying, it's not, if I'm paying Netflix, I should get my service, right? The limitation of resources is not my problem. Well, that's a digital service. It's, that's, it's, any, that's it's a service, a, it's any service. If no, I'm paying for I mean, a service, a, you a, can't. A police service requires employees and people to go out and perform those acts because it's a very uh, intimate job that the police officer has. He is in the role of It doesn't of matter. A service or a good is still a service, right? The service have, that the police you, provide, they must first, mm -hmm. in terms of protection, they must first rob you of your property through taxes before they can make the claim that we're here to protect your property. So they're not in the business of protecting. If they first have to do harm and evil before they can make claims that they're here to do good. Well, you're saying... Well, again, you're saying taxation is robbing. It's theft. Okay. Yes, could, could, it's not can, can we agree that services, you know, paying someone for a service is uh, not evil? Uh, if I'm a, a voluntary service, if it's consensual, mm -hmm. of course. Now, if I walk in an alley and a mugger comes up with a gun and says, uh, give me your wallet, I'm not paying him money. I'm not paying mm -hmm. him. I want, I'm surrendering my property. Yeah, he's I will, demanding it. He's demanding it out of threat of violence because mm -hmm. I might get killed. Yeah. Now, that's not a service, right? So when the police are saying that we're going to here provide you service, but first, I need your money. Give me, surrender your mm -hmm. property. That's not a service. And right. it does. And I don't care then what they do with my money or what they claim to do when mm -hmm. I mean, they first have to commit acts of violence upon me. Okay. Right. I, I understand what you're saying. I, I would say uh, government done has a lot of a great job, I was saying, confusing a lot of people into thinking that they're like a business. Like uh, ABC, mm -hmm. sometimes like to purport themselves as a business, says, thank you for your patrons, thank you for your business. I can't go anywhere else. ABC has a monopoly on yeah. alcohol, yeah. right? Well, so Due to state law, but yeah. Right, so, yeah, it's a monopoly on distilled mm -hmm. spirits and retail and wholesale mm -hmm. uh, distribution of distilled spirits. You look at uh, the USPS, post office, it's a monopoly on first class mail. As a legal, yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't you say USPS is a service that we should all have access to, and I and the through the government regulation of that market, they control it, so it, we can't be taken advantage of. Uh, so government's control of uh, mailing system. The reason was to control the means of communication and how we interact with one another. So they used to I stop mean, anti-slavery literature from being passed around, anti-abortion literature. Uh, in the 1800s, mid 1800s, there's a guy by the name of Lysander Spooner who competed against it. His, his, his business was called the American Little Mail Company. And he did it faster, cheaper, more efficient. It was $2.50 to mail a letter. Through his competition, he brought them to their knees to three cents. And government said, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. They sued him out of business, and next year Congress has passed a law that says, okay, we're not doing that again. Here's a law, no one's allowed to compete with the USPS. Mm -hmm. So here's an example in the market in history that nobody talks about where they did provide this stuff in abundance for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but government doesn't like competition against them, so they outlaw and make it criminal. And that's why it's illegal for anyone to compete in the market to deliver pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. FedEx and UPS and DHL can only deliver packages. Uh, and they'll even say it on their website. We are a monopoly on first class mail. Mm -hmm. um, so, but coming from that, we can bounce that. And then what is government then? All that government is then is just a violent monopoly on the services you and I want. Because I want roads, I want law, I want arbitration, I want security, I want alcohol. Um, True. But government has a monopoly in these things in which you do not have the economic freedom to cancel on subscribers who would from a real business service. Well, I mean, I have the freedom to uh, renounce my, uh, my, not nationhood, my uh, natural born citizenry to U.S. and I can uh, become an expatriate. And... We can talk about that in a second. Okay. You really don't. Uh... I mean, you can. <laughs> no, you got to get the permission to leave the country. You got to get a password and that can take up a few years if they want to. Uh, so if you have, are you, I mean, are you saying that people who want to become expatriates are being denied simply because of the? We're going to take to that. I just want to finish 
what a monopoly is, and that <laughs> you don't have the economic freedom to cancel mm -hmm. and subscribe as you would from a real business service. Like, and Netflix increased the price a couple of years ago. People mm -hmm. are like, well, cancel and subscribe and go to Hulu, right? Mm -hmm. When government does it, you can't go anywhere else because it's also illegal and criminal for you to compete as an entrepreneur to say, I can provide you a better service. It's not going to be abusive or harmful mm -hmm. to you, the consumer. So that's all the government is. Okay. Uh, and whenever you have a government monopoly, cost will goes up, quality will go down. That's why they remove the clocks in most of the post office to solve long waiting lines. <laughs> Uh, that's why they, they can't allocate resources efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, they're billions of dollars in debt. Detroit, with all their unfunded liabilities, of well, these monopolies. I don't falling. think that is really a negative thing when you're talking about uh, global uh, gov governments, because I feel like debt is a when, you're, when we're talking about uh, countries yeah. as a whole, uh, debt is them investing in the U.S. They don't want us to fail. They don't want us to collapse and not be able to pay them back. That would be. They would be out of shit ton of money, billions of dollars, you know. They're investing in the U.S. because they, they want us to prosper. They, they see the potential and they see the ability to make a profit off that investment. Well, I'm not saying, I never said debt is a bad thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, I, I but but, but I would say, though, um, the debt that the government uses, though, mm -hmm. comes from the unborn children used as collateral because one day they'll be future taxpayers. And that's who they use to fund uh, Social Security in the very Wait, beginning. I'm sorry. I, I, what do you mean? Uh, so like like uh, Social Security. Mm -hmm. People say it's a great program. Everybody has it in the first year. But they don't tell them the true cross what it's going to be like later down the road because the politician's not going to be around. They punt the, the bill to the next mm -hmm. generation, to yeah. the next. Yeah, and the way, it's going to run out eventually. Right. They, and they fund it, though, by saying, well, in the future there will be babies and they're going to be taxpayers. So we're going to use them as collateral uh, mm -hmm. to borrow and increase this debt to continue to try to provide these services. Hmm. So the debt in a real business is, doesn't come from <laughs> using the unborn as collateral, that one day that they'll be able to pay for it. Mm -hmm. The debt from a real business is, comes from uh, borrowing credit. Uh, well, you could say in a business, the unborn are potential customers. You, you could say that, but that's that's consensual, that's voluntary. Well, okay, The relationship sure. with like me, what? I'm forced to pay for it, and yeah. uh, I never, will never see a dime, and it's time for us yeah. to retire. Uh, what would you say is a better alternative to uh, a widespread government system that maintains order or attempts to maintain right. order. And uh, yeah, so what I want then, so in terms of the relationship we have with government then, mm -hmm. uh, it's cohesive, it's not voluntary. They can tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, mm -hmm. right? Cannabis laws yeah. are for women, uh, mandatory uh, ultra ultrasounds for abortions. Uh, they could take your land anytime, three minute domain. They could take your property if you don't pay property taxes, mm -hmm. uh, make you homeless on the streets if they want to. They can tell you what you can and cannot do with your life, with your body, with your property, and anything you own. But you can't tell them the politicians the same. So what I'm uh, well, you the alternative could communicate through voting. Yeah, well, but it's I supposed to be that way. Yeah, I, I yeah, agree. It's yeah. it's you know we've gotten to a point where it's the ruled and the ruled, right. uh, or the rulers and the ruled. Where it's supposed ruled. to be the uh, elected and the electors. Yeah, but they don't even trust you to make the decision. That's why they have an electoral college. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the alternative would be to abolish this monopoly and let the market provide all these goods and services that they provide anything else. Mm -hmm. When you have a market competition in which anyone can compete, the opposite happens with what happens when government monopolizes. You have the cost lowers to that competition. The quality improves for that. Mm -hmm. So we can still have roads. We can still have arbitration. Arbitration, a great one, in which if I go in to resolve a conflict or dispute, the judge stands up because I'm paying his salary for his services. Right? Not the other way around. It says, well, contempt of court because I don't like what you're wearing because mm -hmm. uh, he didn't stand for the pledge uh, because he didn't say your honor. It happens all the time to a lot of people and they spend nights in cages for that. Um, so I want to remove this cohesive relationship we have with this thing called government and which the only way this organization only knows how to solve problems is through a single way, through the threat of and use of violence to solve any of the problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already have and uphold to be virtuous and good mm -hmm. for us. So just find peaceful solutions to these problems that doesn't okay. resolve on pointing guns at people. So you're saying through capitalism and open market, uh, if we deregulated all the government uh, controlled sort of markets like electricity and uh, uh, social uh, social services and healthcare uh, those prices would go down and quality would go up yes uh, respect for property rights is what I advocate mm -hmm. and body ownership and Okay, and, and you cited and you, you talked about the uh, the mailing company back in eighteen hundred yeah the American Little Mail Company wouldn't you or how, how do you feel about this? From my perspective, capitalism has reached a point where uh, no longer does the uh, cheaper and better product win. It's the 
bigger companies who control mass media. Uh, they have the amount of money that they can sue anybody yeah. just into the ground and just demolish them completely. Um, so I feel like capitalism doesn't guarantee that at this stage. And like, Maybe back in the 1800s, I totally agree. I think capitalism was, was amazing back in the day. Uh, I didn't live to see it, but... Uh, uh, yeah, what, what do you think about that? I think it's uh, mutated to something horrible today in terms mm -hmm. of uh, being now in bed and relationship with uh, Dr. Frankenstein, that is government. I would say capitalism today in terms of like uh, the corporations that mm -hmm. exist today, they're able to escape liability for their actions, mm -hmm. is an extension from government. Uh, it's the immunity granted to CEOs. Like they they won't lose their jobs, lose their house, lose their money, go to jail for mm -hmm. any of their mistakes. They offset yeah. it to everybody else. But that's the same immunity that judges enjoy because he can't sue uh, court judges or prosecutors mm -hmm. or cops for the most part or the president can pardon themselves. So it's an immunity from the government they extend, they started to extend to these capitalists. And now it's just mutating form to these monsters now that mm -hmm. we see them today. Yeah. Uh, so then I still find the solution then towards the way how things used to be before that, people were held liable for their own actions. Um, it's, if you remove, if you go after Dr. Frankenstein and abolish the uh, uh, his laboratory, his creation, mm -hmm. you won't have these monstrous corporations and the problems that you're talking about today mm -hmm. that I do agree with as well. Mm -hmm. So what would you say a better solution would be? Uh, to abolish government, liberate the market, and from there finally have respect for property rights, for body ownership. Okay. I mean, if we abolished government, don't you think mega corporations would still be a big issue and they would even be a bigger issue because well, there wouldn't no be a regulating Oh, because right, there's no more government now. The only reason they're so big because they could use government to pass laws to limit the barriers of interest for anyone to compete in this market. Or you look like uh, Virginia Dominion Power. Mm -hmm. That's a state-granted monopoly. It's illegal and criminal for anyone to compete. Yeah. And that's why they're so monolithic here in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. If you abolish a government, hundreds and hundreds of finally emerge. The reason why Tesla can't sell their automobiles in Virginia is because they can't. <coughs> right, they can't. Because they have to sell I've, it. I've seen Tesla. They have to sell it through a dealership. Oh, okay. Right. Not, so, okay. right, the dealerships uh, don't like competition. Those businesses. Mm -hmm. they, they, if anyone's going to sell a car, it has to be through their automobile dealership. So they created a cartel that is passed through law through government. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these businesses and big businesses use government as a as a tool to hit competitors, and that's why they want to remain the only ones in the market. Mm -hmm. You remove government, they have no tool. Anyone now can emerge. Are you saying compete. Are you saying the government is, or I, I assume you're talking about uh, the state government, in Virginia is uh, uh, denying Tesla the right yes. to sell from a uh, business to consumer. Which is what they want to do. They want to skip the whole automobile dealership because that adds extra costs, right? They're trying to lower the costs. Okay. What what is their what what is their stated grounds for denying? Uh, because uh, the automobile dealership years ago mm -hmm. uh, was able to pass legislation uh, to protect their cartel monopoly from anyone Long trying to sell cars, right? Uh, same thing why uh, taxi cabs uh, don't like uh, Uber and Lyft. Yeah. They don't like competition. Yeah. So, so some of them are trying to get government laws so no one's allowed to compete mm -hmm. in the market, right? So you find time and time again in many of these examples of like businesses trying to use the, the tool of government as a weapon to, to beat down competition. And mm -hmm. that's why you would have now these big corporations because there's no one else that can compete because they keep mm -hmm. using government as a, as a weapon to knock them down every Do you time. think the government performs any helpful and beneficial regulation? No. No, not at all. No. We can have not accreditation. At not at all. We can have accreditation companies. That those exist. You could look like uh, one of the biggest businesses, like Etsy, eBay. Uh, you look at the, uh, in terms of like how they resolve conflicts or disputes. The rating systems they have. It's like yeah, you got one star, half a star out of five. It's like yeah, I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. the, the consumer comments that comes in there. Uh, consumers do a great job in regulating in terms of like word of mouth. You saw what happened with Balasso. Did you hear about that recently? I did not. No. Somebody was wearing blackface uh, at the restaurant. To tons of public outlaps that came upon it saying we're not going to patronize your restaurant I can't believe you let a staff member come here and work uh, and continue doing that in like costume yeah for Halloween yeah <laughs> yeah okay. so but the consumer backlash regulates that right mm -hmm. they're saying this is not a value that we uphold right this is not something that we like in our community mm -hmm. there wasn't a law or anything like that that's driving the business down it's the consumers because at any time they can withdraw their relationship with you as a business mm -hmm. right Businesses without the government then are finally at the mercy of consumers. It's consumers now that are king because they can cancel and unsubscribe and go anywhere else or compete. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a right to anyone's money to their wallet. Would you would you think that if we got rid of government, eventually, 
you know, we can see these like mega corporations who buy other corporations, it just becomes this giant pyramid of like, like, uh, AB, I, I, don't, I forget the company is ABC, uh, I don't know, there was some huge purchase that uh, was in the news recently uh, where a bunch of companies were merging. Uh, do you feel that if we got rid of government, that that would get out of control and our very sources of information, our very sources of news and media would be controlled by these mega corporations that have no oversight, no, no uh, government regulation. And there may be consumers who uh, worry about that and uh, try to spread information, but on the whole, you know, we can see in the election, Trump is a literal candidate for the president of the United States uh, there's a lot of not very intelligent people in the country. Yeah, so, right. uh, you know, we're a very vulnerable population that can be taken advantage of, and all especially the by are these mega corporations. The hands of, uh, Hillary, you have, uh, well, I mean, I, 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 the Clintons are totally like a, a political machine yeah, that are just yeah. wrap their tendrils around so, the U.S. But uh, yeah, but yeah. but now at any time can start a YouTube channel and find and start their own uh, journalism. Yeah, right? yeah. That happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, and you find uh, a lot of now distrust of corporate media that's funny emerging. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, and, and like something growing big, um, it could happen. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Is it sustainable in the long run? Not really, because at any time anyone can compete. Like Blockbuster enjoyed a great market share in rentals, and they're yeah. like, dude, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then came Redbox, yeah. uh, just a box outside a grocery store, yeah. and then they just dominated yeah. the field and just knocked them out. Instantly closed out. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, a lot of them want to try to be up there, so it's, it's really hard uh, mm -hmm. in terms of entrepreneurship, and, and especially if you're growing big as a base, that's a lot to kind of manage. And anytime you can kind of slip up, mm -hmm. anytime um, a new competitor can arise with better technology, better ways to provide things, mm -hmm. then you can lose that dominant share of the market. Like Yahoo had a big search engine for a long time, and Google just came out of nowhere and just yeah. overwhelmed it. Yeah. Um, MySpace, and then Facebook came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so these things just uh, are unpredictable. You can't really predict the trends mm -hmm. of these things. I mean, if you could, you'd be like, Millionaire, yeah, right? <laughs> there are millionaires who predicted. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's yeah. so hard. Yeah. Um, and so that's so that's the thing. Yeah, business can grow enormous. Um, to sustain that, it is very very difficult because mm -hmm. uh, any time it could collapse. There's no guarantee of a future. You can try to project and try to allocate resources, and that's the best you can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there could be a mad bad uh, campaign against like uh, you look at Chick Fil A's founder who was like putting money in anti LGTB yeah. groups through the yeah. government. Yeah. Backlash came in, right? And he was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll stop that, right?" Mm -hmm. But uh, well, also stopped his public. Right, show, right, right. Yeah. So he, he stopped trying to fund it, yeah. right? So, so you find a lot of ways in, in control of that. Mm -hmm. like, things kind of shift, and the powers move all, all the time, all around. Um, yeah, I can't really imagine uh, in terms of like something growing to enormous size to continue to sustain it before like it's just uh, something better comes along the way, and the whole thing has to break apart, and mm -hmm. and they have to sell off to other businesses and disseminate. And, yeah. Okay. Um, it's like the state of technology and things just uh, disassemble and reassemble and resources uh, mm -hmm. are just kind of placed in a better state, reshaped. Okay. Uh, so to move away from economics, uh, sort of like morals and uh, moral obligations that the government have to us, uh, what would you believe is a better alternative to the government enforcing laws that are I mean, especially in states, right. the state laws, you know, we, we elect uh, representatives to uh, draft and make laws that represent our views uh, and get rid of laws that don't represent our views. And, you know, even states can vote on laws sometimes, you know, in I think Massachusetts and uh, Florida and a bunch of different states are voting on uh, uh, medical cannabis uh, legalization. Uh, how do you feel would be a better way to regulate uh, what is morally allowed in our society? Right, uh, that's a great question. And the way I would address it would be: if you look at Virginia, mm -hmm. it's uh, we look at it as one monopolized community, right? Okay. They're all kind of forced to live together, in which mm -hmm. the majority preference is forced into the minority in terms of laws. So mm -hmm. That's why cannabis is illegal. Mm -hmm. um, instead, what the absence of government and that monopoly. Uh, you liberate these communities. Now you have thousands of free market societies based on explicit consent, catering to your lifestyle preferences. Now finally, you can live in a community that's 420 friendly, 
one across the river that's not. Uh, you can have uh, all kinds of dun dungeon and dragons and Amish communities and all <laughs> kinds of stuff, right? It's like I can have uh, golf course communities that exist today. Mm -hmm. uh, in Florida, 55 and older communities, right? Mm -hmm. And the rules of those communities dictate uh, the kind of behavior, the, the ethics it can say, uh, the things that are allowed and not allowed. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm looking at a pamphlet to move in whatever community I want to, it's like, well, here are the rules and here are the consequences. It's a $2 fine or Pelify. The Amish, they only believe in just uh, forgiveness and ostracizing. There's no stockade or you know prisons or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be called a polycentric legal system. Uh, so what, what would you say to people who don't like that? Um, that does well. These are based on consent. So the people who would be opposed to these things are people who don't value consent, right? And that's fine. There's you know, you can live in the woods and try to start create a AC by yourself, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck making a heater. <laughs> yeah. Takes enormous market cooperation for a division of labor to come together and to mm -hmm. trade and to come up with goods. Mm -hmm. Like Hong Kong is an island with no natural resources, yet they're like number one in the World Economic Index mm -hmm. uh, through that open trade uh, that they have. So, um, I yeah, wouldn't concern myself with, uh, I don't, the majority of people value consent. A lot of people value self-ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say there's less than even like 0.0001% that are like, yeah, you know, those are your violent sociopaths, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, like what would you, what would you say to the argument that, uh, especially police forces, um, and you did say a case where the Supreme Court said they didn't, uh, have to respond to that call. Uh, I assume in 99.99% of cases, or at least 99% won't go to 0.99, but 99% of the cases, you know, the police respond to distress calls for help. Uh, what would you say to the argument that, you know, one person can ruin it for everyone? You know, one baguette, bad egg could just get a gun and shoot up an entire community and because that community was built upon the trust built between each other right. you know that isn't inherently there it's we create that trust through uh, yeah. accepting it uh, just mentally uh, and forming those communities yeah what, what do you what do you say to something like that are you, are you saying that uh, police forces should be businesses and it's like any, yeah, like any other service. Uh, good. I'm here to, pr to protect your property, right? Uh, bouncers here, you know, make sure there's good uh, patrons coming in, right? Mm -hmm. No one's going to be an asshole. Uh, there's pay there's uh, securities at Disney World, right? No one's mm -hmm. going to go and hit the, you know, the guy dressed up as Goofy. Those are pretty uh, high high economic standing locations. Like, what what about poor people? They won't have yeah, the money yeah. to so, pay for protection. Uh, there's a place like in Detroit. It takes over an hour for police to respond to 911 calls. But there's a guy. Wow, Detroit's uh, pretty fucked up. All cities are eventually going to be just like that. There's, these are just unfunded liabilities that so just eventually just the costs are just too great, um, and they they start to collapse. And so there's this guy Why named Hong uh, Kong collapse. Uh, Hong Kong doesn't have those kind of uh, government type monopolies like Detroit has right now. Uh, in terms of uh, they have enormous uh, leeway towards uh, a freer market than mm -hmm. a government controlled one. The British government left them alone for the most part under their rule. Mm -hmm. So they came, They went from a island of nothing but sweatshops in the 50s and 60s, because there's like no government interference in their lives, mm -hmm. to skyscrapers yeah, <laughs> to yeah, space yeah. now, right? Uh, so that's an example, a sliver of example of what happens. You just remove government out of your community, things will go towards the heavens. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you have places where Detroit, a lot of government intervention and all everyone's affairs, things stagnate and things go idle and things Class. Well, you just um, you just said that it takes in an hour for a police call. Over to an hour for police, right? So that doesn't sound like police is very. Uh, there's been a lot of reports of police uh, robbing people. What? Uh, yeah, like trying to pretend they're like a regular bad guy in their own car, and it turns out they were a cop. Uh, over an hour to respond to a 911 call. That's you know the person's already dead. Mm -hmm. You know they're not going to catch anybody. Well, let's talk um, about. But, let's but, talk but about the, the, the reason why I brought that up is because there's a guy there who created the Viper Threat Management System, his own security company in Detroit. And they have stopped all the hijacks that are going on in that city. From that extra funding and profit he's made from that, he's now able to provide a, affordable services for a lot of the impoverished communities in these other cities in, in, the, in the Detroit now. Mm -hmm. So even the poor people now That's have awesome. access to security. Yeah, uh, transit has shut down in Detroit. And so there's a guy who bought four buses in Detroit, painted to reflect the geographic regions of that city. Mm -hmm. And these buses will pick you up wherever you are. There's no centralized planning routes. Um, there's also Wi-Fi on these buses. There's also music. There's also BYOB. All right? That's a great market <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> incentive. I want to you know, get on buses now for that, right? I want that job. I just want to drive the bus. <laughs>
<laughs> well, assuming the market provides a lot of awesome creative ways to solve mm -hmm. these problems. For the government, it's just, well, here's one way, and that one way just sticks for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a space shuttle for NASA, and it's the same shuttle yeah. for decades. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I mean in terms of security. The market can provide security, just like anything, but it won't be the a la carte blanche and throwing every, the whole package on you. It'll be you like, yeah, I can use this, maybe a little of this, right, and some of that. And mm -hmm. when there's market competition, it's like, I'm in the business for 10 years. You know, look at my customer feedback for you. Uh, first month free, someone else will say, no, no, I've been in business for 15 years. Try our services instead, yeah. right? So competition drives down prices, quality mm -hmm. goes up. And now you have a lot of uh, different market kind of uh, shares for a lot of different people and, and whatever their economic stance are. Mm -hmm. uh, poor people now can have cell phones finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see them all the yeah. time. Yeah. I might not afford the iPhone 8, but yeah. I could definitely get like an like iPhone eight, 3 or 4 or for like yeah, 20 whatever, bucks yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Poor people have um, a majority of them, well, like 80% have, have a refrigerator now, an AC unit, at least one car, a microwave, a lot of luxuries. Like we're a much better care of, I guess, the. Uh, ruled class, you could say, than the ones a hundred years ago. Yeah, never had yeah, access no, to this, absolutely, right? absolutely. And these things were created uh, from market competition. Mm -hmm. um, so, the more you remove government, the more market comes in. The better off we start living, uh, like kings, you can say. Finally. <laughs> so. So you, okay, so what would what would you say, in response to? Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I don't know how long ago, but uh, when they were inventing light bulbs and improving upon the design of light bulbs, uh, they oh, come a little closer. Oh, yeah, you're good. <laughs> uh, they uh, got the duration that a light bulb would last to ridiculous amounts. Like, I think there's a standard of ten thousand hours mm -hmm. for a light bulb nowadays. Back then, they could get it uh, like a hundred thousand hours. I remember hearing this. Yeah, like like uh, insane amount of uh, bulb life, uh, and all the major companies came together that were selling and manufacturing light bulbs, and they reduced their quality so that they could make more profit, so that they would sell more because it would run out after 10,000 hours, and you'd have to buy another one instead of getting one for 200,000 hours and not having to buy one, and them and the company who sells the light bulb manufacturers getting one twentieth of the the profit, right? Uh, and it, I feel like in a society where, I mean, that, that happened with government. So, you know, I'm not saying that well, government you, fixes that. Right, but, so we're talking about like collusion, right? In mm -hmm. terms of uh, like price fixing. And yeah, and yeah, like okay. yeah. Um, so the, the only thing about these sort of things is that it only takes one person to break off. And that always happens. Uh, mm -hmm. with, like someone who's not even part of that group. It just takes one person to say, well, I'm just going to do my own and compete, and the whole thing starts to collapse. Mm -hmm. I've seen like um, How, a corner store of somebody saying, like, this is a dollar store right across the street was the 99 cent store. Uh, yeah. so, and there's like a 98 cent store. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, these, these things can't really last uh, in terms of like, um, in, in terms of those collusion. I think a lot of problems with that will be patents. Uh, so it's difficult mm -hmm. for people to compete because they have a government monopoly on patterns and information. Mm -hmm. So, like the Wright brothers, people say, uh, the Wright brothers were great in that they created an airplane. It was like, that was awesome, right? Mm -hmm. They were competing against the government and creating the airplane. And one of the first letters went out to the patent attorney. And the reason why you never hear all these awesome airplanes that they designed after that was because they spent the rest of their lives suing people trying to build airplanes in their backyard. <laughs> the Wright brothers? Yes. <laughs> So, stifles innovation, <laughs> yeah. stifles technology. Yeah, yeah. And when World War One broke out, there were no planes in the U.S. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of like the light bulb, maybe there's patents uh, that they got from the government, and then mm -hmm. it's difficult for people to copy when the government will come and point guns at you for trying to, mm -hmm. right? So that's another reason to remove government. So you don't have these patterns of monopolies, and people mm -hmm. can copy and try to compete and create. So we shouldn't. You don't think we should have patents? No patents, because all a patent is is. I got permission from government saying no one's allowed to copy from me. Well, some would say patent a patent is sort of a worldwide uh, proof that you created an idea and it's giving you permission to use that for your own profitable venture, and it's a, and it allows you to uh, uh, at least cease and desist or sue if if need be people who take advantage and steal that idea. Well, ideas can't, you can't steal an idea. You can only copy You can an steal idea. an invention. 
If you're still an invention, you actually took something physical, right? No, you could steal the design of an invention. Well, then I'll have to break into your house and steal that design, right? Yeah, I have stolen something physical. All I could do, if I see you driving this awesome car, mm -hmm. I, I could just like, what the hell is that? Try to go home and design it and try to figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. But I haven't, haven't really taken that car from you. Well, right? okay, okay, right? that, that's true. Uh, so, so in terms of, so we have to separate then copying and theft. Theft is a removal of a property that you own, mm -hmm. right? Without your consent. An idea though, there's just thoughts. So you don't think there's intellectual property? No, it's a. Uh, I mean, th there isn't. Uh, okay. Copyrights, uh, what about patents. Books? Yeah, b books. Right. So like, now it's only the consumer that can sue the person for fraud. So if I were to say, hey, I wrote this uh, uh, philosopher stone Harry Potter book. That's yeah. that's me. I wrote my name on yeah. it. And they're like, you wrote this book? It's like, yeah. And then you've come to find out that I did it. Now you can sue me for fraud. Right, because you bought the book in the condition that I was the author of this book. In mm -hmm. reality, someone else wrote it. How would I sue you if there's no government? Oh, so you can have system. right. So you can have you can have court systems, arbitration. You find that all the time in eBay and Etsy. Uh, if someone unauthorized use of your credit card is like, all right, we're going to resolve this dispute. We're going to credit you back. Don't worry, we got you. Right. Okay. Uh, so we can have dispute organizations uh, that resolve these conflicts. In that, when you enter the courtroom, though, you know they stand up because they're paying their service, mm -hmm. right? Not contempt of court, again, because I don't like yeah. what you're wearing. <laughs> uh, and so we can have, and all the judge is, is the person who provides a, an opinion on resolving these conflicts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's kind of what we seek, peaceful solutions to these things. Uh, and so copyrights and patents, though, they're not, it's not, they're not real property as like this mic, this table, um, in terms of what is property, right? Intellectual mm -hmm. property is not real property by definition. Um, the people who advocate for that, though, uh, do so because now they can get a government stamp that says, aha, this is mine now. Uh, no one's allowed to copy. Yeah. And uh, if you try to copy, I can sue you and, and take your money, right? Yeah. And so technology stifles. The reason why people can't compete against iPhones in the round corners is because they have a patent on that. So mm -hmm. no one's allowed to create yeah. a phone with that. For a while, you were not allowed to sing Happy Birthday song without giving up money. What? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure everybody followed that law. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, you know what? You're right. It's stupid. <laughs> um, I mean, you can have uh, agreements. If I were to mm -hmm. give you something, I'm going to trade this to you uh, on a contract that you won't copy. I could do that. But the contract relationship we have doesn't apply to person C who happens to C, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't have a contract relationship with that person. So you can have weird stipulations with that, um, but I can't uh, behold anyone else who's not part of that contract or agreement. Okay. Like everything you're saying, like it, it sounds really good. I mean, like. Yeah, I mean, a I lot mean, of good questions I mean, in that. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Uh, You know, when when you're thinking about politics and political ideology and government systems, uh, it's very, at least for me, it's very easy to think of a system, and in my head it works, and it, I mean it should work, it, you know, yeah. it makes sense, uh, but in real life it just doesn't work out that way because people don't cooperate in the same, in the way that you anticipate or the way that you uh, desire them to cooperate right. in the system. Not not even because it's not in their best interest. Sometimes they're just misinformed or they're stubborn in their views or anything, you know? I mean, people are people, you know, they're not rational. Um, so, so when you're talking about like this arbitration and how, you know, we can have uh, supposed uh, you know, for consumer uh, sort of morals in, in these systems that would be set up uh, by third parties, like, don't, like, wouldn't there be multiple arbitration systems yes. and multiple yeah. people making judgments? And then sometimes this company is like, no, I, I like this arbitration company. And this company, yeah. no, I like this arbitration company. Yeah. And then turns out company A actually funded arbitration company B. And they're in bed with them and they're giving them money to, uh, you know. That would be a problem, yeah. Yeah, that would be, yeah. Uh, so that's why like, you've never heard anyone giving money to the people who review in uh, consumer reports. The moment there is one dollar in their pocket and reviewing products, mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing collapses. They're based entirely. There, there are people that are paid to be, uh, to, they're paid to do, submit false reviews. Uh, yeah, but consumer reports though, nothing's ever come out of it. Uh, what do you mean? In terms of like, they're, they're supposed to be top of the line in terms of integrity that we do an unbiased review of services. No one's filling our pockets to give them a more favorable review. 
Um, the moment that's found out, there's other people in the in the accreditation system trying to compete to get in that top level of uh, integrity, of right? Oh, okay. Um, now the thing is, in terms like arbitration, the way those things would resolve would be that uh, if we lived in the same community or you're going to move in a community, we can, before we move in together, we already have a selection of arbitrations we can choose from in the event you and I have a conflict, right? Okay. And then so we, we choose. It's like, yeah, I don't like this one because uh, some weird thing about that. I don't like this guy's last name or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can choose third parties before it even arises to court. Uh, and then you can choose like an appeals arbitration system as well uh, in that regard. So it doesn't, it's not like you're stuck with one or someone one is imposed on you. Mm -hmm. You get to choose yourself out of the many selections that are out there. My friend will pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so yeah, so that removes uh, third party conflicts that are like close together. So but like keep it more community based. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Under government though, the police works for the government, the prosecutor works for the government, the judge works for the government. Uh, the defendant, the uh, defender that they give you works mm -hmm. for the government. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in there that says that we're on bias yeah. <laughs> on yeah. your side. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, for, no. for <laughs> My name is Cal. Yeah, Paige. Paige. But let me give you some uh, good stuff here. Yeah, we'll